Kellogg's Pep, the super delicious cereal, presents The Adventures of Superman. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. And now, the adventures of Superman. A piece of green glowing kryptonite, a fragment of the planet on which he was born, robs Superman of all his strength when it is brought near him. Part of this fragment is now in the possession of Der Teufel, a brilliant but unscrupulous Nazi scientist, who claims that with it, he can create an atomic monster able to control not only Superman, but the entire world. Disguised as a foreign diplomat, Teufel flew to Berlin, where he disappeared. And as Superman and the police of two continents hunted for him, he came by night to a tiny inn at the edge of the Black Forest. Wearing ragged clothes and a black wig, a patch over one eye, and a battered knapsack on his back, he sits in a corner of the small, uncarpeted dining room, his face half-hidden behind a newspaper. As the only other diner leaves, Teufel calls to the fat, white-aproned owner of the inn. Listen. You, come here. Yeah? What is it? You do not know me? I do not know times such as you. I wish to close up now. For the meal, you owe me five marks. Look closely at me, Gottfried. How do you know my name? Who are you? You do not recognize my voice. Well, I've been away a long time. Wait. I will remove the wig. So? And the patch from my eye. So? <sighs> now, you regard me? The Teufel. Not so bad. Who else is here? At the moment, only myself and my wife, Goethe. But the Allied soldiers are all about in the forest and on the road. I they saw them. Tell me, Professor Milk is in the hiding place. Milk? Yeah, Milk, the chemist, my colleague. The Allied soldiers have not captured him. Nein, not yet. Good. I must see him at once. But there's... Come, take me to the passageway. It's in the cellar, is it not? Well, why do you stand there? Take me to the passageway, I said. Nein, Teufel. You cannot go to the hiding place in the forest. You are a great danger to us. A danger? I a danger? You blockhead. I come on a great mission to restore the fatherland. Tremendous difficulties I had in escaping from the United States and then from the Americans in Berlin. Oh, that we know. And we know too that the American police traced you to Berlin and now their police in Germany may find you. Ah. Already, just before evening, they were here at my inn to inquire if any had seen you. So far, they do not suspect that I work in the undercar Nazi movement. What art it? Listen to me. Someone is coming. Send him away, whoever it is. I cannot. It may be the American police. Quick, quick, put that video on your head and the patch on your eye. Godfrey! It is the American sergeant who guards this road. Oh, him. Now we are in trouble. Why did you not leave? I bet you... Quiet, right, fool. Do as I say. I am your cousin from Nuremberg, Friedrich Merkel. You understand? It will not work. Silence. Control yourself or all is lost. Oh, there you are, Godfrey. Why didn't you answer? Who oh, is this man? Ah, uh, good and such, and I... <laughs> I did not hear you come in. I was so busy talking, recalling old times with my cousin. Uh, cousin, huh? I haven't seen him around before. Oh, uh, no, no. You see, he has... I only just arrived, Herr Sergeant, to visit my cousin, Godfrey. What's your name? Friedrich Melcher, mein Herr. Where are you from? From Nuremberg. Let me see your papers. What, well, sir? Yeah, certainly, mein Herr. Here they are. Ah. Well, they seem to be in order. Oh, thank you, mein Herr. The American sergeant thought perhaps I was a Nazi, Godfrey. Oh, no, I... Ah, this... you Germans are all alike. Now you've lost the war, all of you say you hated Hitler, and none of you were Nazis. Well, I was just shaking up. Good night. A glass of beer before you go, huh, sergeant? Or wine, perhaps? No, thanks. Good night, mein Herr. Good night, Herr Sergeant. Auf Wiedersehen. Big gut, right? Lock the door and turn off the lights. Hurry, I help you. Oh, Himmel, never was I so scared. Where did you get the papers? What does that matter? Hurry, now lock the door. Yeah, I will lock it. After you leave. Again, that. Listen to me, Gottfried. I tell you, I must see Professor Milch. With his aid, I can not only control the American Superman who blocked our plans before, what but... What is that you say? You can control Superman? Ah, now you become interested. But then listen... With what is in the knapsack on my back, we will be able to control the world, let alone Superman. What is in your knapsack? I will show you, but first, lock the door. I will lower the shade on the window. All right. (coughs) 
Now, the American soldiers will think I have gone to bed. Show me what is in the knapsack, Teufel. Yeah, one moment. Ah, here it is. The box? Is that all? Is that all, he says. This box got weight is the power to completely destroy our enemies. Look. What strange thing is that? Like a large piece of stone, only it gives off a green light. Then what is that queer sound it makes? That which you see, Gottfried, is kryptonite. Kryptonite? Well, what is that? It is a fragment of the former planet Krypton on which Superman was born. Then he comes within ten feet of this substance. He becomes weak and even loses consciousness. What nonsense is this? This is the truth I have seen for myself. And more I have seen. No! Do not touch it. It will burn your hands. It will burn? Yeah. It is highly radioactive. I have discovered by experiments that it is more complex in atomic structure and so more radioactive than any other element known in the world. More so even than thorium, radium, actinium. More even than uranium. Uranium? Ah, that is what the Americans used to make the terrible atomic bomb. Yeah, but beside this kryptonite, uranium is as nothing. The kryptonite has no impurities, and its radioactive discharge, as I have myself measured with an electroscope, is a hundred times greater in intensity than uranium. Do you realize what that means, Katri? You become too scientific for me, Teufel. Just tell me how you plan to use this material to control Superman and destroy our enemies. Ah, now you come to the heart of the matter, Katri. With Professor Milk, whose great genius I require to dissolve this substance, I will create an atom man. An atom man? Yeah, an atom man. A creature more deadly than a dozen atomic bombs. A monster from whose fingertips will come the power. The atomic energy which will make the great Superman his servant, his slave. And which will destroy our enemies. Himmel, this, this atom man, how do you... What is that? Sirens. The Americans, please... They approach from the town. They, they must have traced you here. They must not find me quickly. Take me to the secret passage. Yeah, me. yeah. If what you just told me is true... If it's true, it's Milk's help. I can do what I say in a few days, perhaps even less. Quickly now, take me to the passageway. Come this way to the cellar. Hurry. The police will be here in a moment. There's a tunnel under the floor. I will show you. It will take you under the edge of the forest where the Americans stand guard. To the hidden cave. Hurriedly, the Nazi innkeeper leads De Teufel down to the cellar, to the secret passageway into the Black Forest. De Teufel hurried to the secret passageway in the inn near the Black Forest. Superman has streaked to Berlin from Metropolis. And now, in his guise of Clark Kent, we find him in the office of Colonel Greeley, Chief of Intelligence at American Occupation Force Headquarters. I tell you, we've searched everywhere, Kent, everywhere, but we can't find a trace of Teufel. But he must be found, Colonel Greeley. I'm well aware of that. He made a Dr. Orlowski, the Belgravian finance minister. That's right. That makes an embarrassing situation for our state. Well, it's even more important than that. Teufel has the kryptonite, and I, uh, Superman is helpless against it. Well, I'm not worried about anything like that. I want Teufel for murder. Where was he last seen? At the Berlin airport. The night before last, we landed from a French plane disguised as Dr. Orlowski, made a reservation on a plane leaving for Belgravia at midnight, and then, well, he just disappeared. Oh, but somebody must have seen him. Apparently nobody saw him after he left the reservation office. He's nobody's fool, you know. We've got to find him. We've got to. Oh, excuse me. That's my phone. Colonel Gradley speaking. Who? Oh, yes, Captain Meisner. What? You have? Where? Who? I see. Yes, yes, of course, I'll be right over. Of course, at once. Thanks, Lord. Come on, Kent. That was... Captain Meisky of the Russian Occupational Police. He just got a hot clue to Teufel. He did? What is it? He didn't say he just told me to rush right over. I presume you want to come along. Do I? Try and stop me. We can go through the record offices to the back of the building. My car is waiting. We can be at Russian headquarters in five minutes. Come on, Kent. On the double. Eagerly, Clark Kent and Colonel Greeley rushed from the American Occupation Building. What have the Russians discovered about Der Teufel? Will it enable Superman to intercept the brilliant but unscrupulous Nazi scientist before he can create his dread atom man and turn him loose against the man of steel and civilization? And what is the atom man? Every tense moment counts now, fellows and girls, so don't fail to listen tomorrow, same time, same station, to the adventures of Superman. Kellogg's Pep! The Super Delicious Cereal presents... The Adventures of Superman! Faster than a speeding bullet! 
more powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. And now the adventures of Superman. Having stolen part of the kryptonite fragment which robs Superman of his strength, Der Teufel, a brilliant but unscrupulous Nazi scientist, escaped to Germany. At an inn, he told a Nazi underground henchman that he must see a chemist named Milk who was hiding in the Black Forest. With the kryptonite, Teufel said he and Milk could create an atomic monster which would control and possibly even destroy Superman. Meanwhile, having traced Teufel to Berlin, Superman in his guise of Clark Kent and Colonel Greeley, an American intelligence officer, were informed that the Russian occupation police had made an important discovery. As we continue now, Kent and Colonel Greeley are in the office of Captain Nikolai Maisky of the Russian police in Berlin. A German prisoner has just been brought in. A squat, slack-jawed man who seems ill at ease in his handsome frock coat and silk hat. Listen. This is the man, gentlemen. He was picked up in the Russian zone of Berlin an hour ago. He had just sold a magnificent mink-lined overcoat to a pawnbroker. I do nothing wrong. It is my own overcoat, I say. Silent, you. But, Captain, this man is not the Teufel. I did not say he was, Colonel Greeley. He had, however, contact with our Teufel. Where? When? A night before the last, Comrade Kent, in a street close to the airport. These are Teufel's clothes he wears now, or rather, the clothes of the late Dr. Orlovsky of Belgravia, as whom Teufel masqueraded. They are? Are you sure? I am positive, Colonel. In a pocket of the overcoat was a label bearing the name of Dr. Orlovsky and the name of a tailor in Belgravia. He gave them to me. I do not know his name. He approached me near the airport, a man much of my own size and wearing very thick eyeglasses. Yes. He carried a fine leather dispatch case. That description fits Teufel, Kent. Yes, yes, go on. He asked if I would exchange clothes with him. At first I thought he made a joke, but he gave me no time to consider. Almost before I knew what occurred, I wore his clothes and he was gone with mine. Gone where? Where did he go? I know not, mein Herren. It was dark at night. I saw him go towards the Kaiserstraße and... Saying I saw him no more. Nor has anyone else. I think you attacked him, robbed him, and did away with his body. Nine, nine, I swear it. Then where are your papers, your identification? I have told you. They were in the pocket of my jacket. But so quick was all this, I did not remember them until the man was gone. Uh-oh, now we're getting someplace. What's your name? Friedrich Melcher, mine here. I am from Nuremberg. Friedrich Melcher from Nuremberg, eh? Colonel Greeley, Teufel is about this fellow's size. And he has his clothes and papers. That means... Teufel is now disguised as Milka. Right, Kent. We'll get after him at once. May I use your phone, Captain Meisky? Of course, Colonel. But it is my opinion that this man lies as do most Germans. I think either he killed Teufel... I, I or else not. is in league with him. Well, if he'd killed him, he'd still have his papers. And if he was in league with him, he wouldn't be so stupid as to walk around in Teufel's discarded clothes. No, I think he's telling the truth. Teufel evidently knew we were aware he was disguised as Dr. Orlovsky... And he needed a new disguise in a hurry to get wherever he's going with the kryptonite. Well, we've got a chance to intercept him now, but we've got to work fast. Right. I'll call American headquarters and send out an alarm. Good. You may be right, Comrade Kent. I'm sure I am. Oh, I will, of course, do all I can to help, too. I, too, will transmit a radio alarm to my men. Soviet KPU, Berlin, calling all military and police forces. Attention. Search for middle-aged men about 5 feet 7, weight 190 pounds, ragged clothing, carrying identification papers of Frederick Berger of Nuremberg. This man is the Teufel. Attention, Berlin office calling all military and occupation police. It is believed that man wanted as the Teufel is now disguised in ragged clothing and carries papers identifying him as Friedrich Pelzer of Nuremberg. As urgent radio calls crackle over the German airwaves to speed a new search for the Teufel, the elusive Nazi scientist has made his way through an underground tunnel from a small inn to a deep rock cave in the Black Forest. The main entrance of the cave is cleverly concealed by fallen trees and heavy underbrush. Within, it is large and musty fitfully illuminated by two coal oil lamps and fitted with rough bunks on which lounge a dozen assorted Nazis. Men young and old, all former leaders in the Nazi regime of savage persecution and conquest. Now hiding from and plotting against their conquerors. Some are men of science. Two are field marshals. Three are members of the ruthless Gestapo. In the half gloom, their eyes gleam like fierce hunted animals as they regard the strangely humming, green-glowing kryptonite 
which the Teufel has set in its opened box before Professor Ernst Milch, the stooped, shaggy-haired chemist, who did more than any one man to keep Hitler's oil-starved Panzer divisions operating on ersatz fuels. There it is, Milch. Almost insurmountable difficulties I had in obtaining it and bringing it here. This is the kryptonite, Teufel? Yeah. It is a part of the fragment from the shattered planet Krypton on which Superman was born. Yeah? In the presence of this material, Superman becomes helpless as a baby. Oh, Superman, hear this? What nonsense is this, Teufel? It is the truth, General Bomburg. I myself have seen Superman lose consciousness when he approached this metal. You may be given an opportunity to see for yourself. There is no element like this in all the world, Milch. The gamma rays it admits, as indicated by the cold green light and hum, are too strong even for him. Oh. It is a hundred times more complex and radioactive than thorium or radium or even uranium. You've tested it with the electroscope? Yeah, and I used shields before. The gamma rays penetrated the shields with such an intensity as to be unbelievable and ionized the air and gases as uranium could never do. And it has no impurities. Think what that means, Miller. Yeah. A tiny quantity of it will serve our purpose, whereas the Americans must have a great deal of uranium to purify only enough for a single atomic bomb. What does this madman speak of bombs? Tell him, Milch, how our great factories are destroyed. Tell him how we, the last few loyal followers of the Fuhrer, lived here in a cave under the ground, hunted like rats, and forced to subsist on a few lean rabbits and birds we can snare in the forest. Do you think I'm a fool? Have I not ice in my head? However, with the kryptonite, we need neither factories nor bombs. What? What do you mean, Teufel? I will explain, but first I will close the box. Oh, but now come. Tell us what it is you mean. I mean this, Mary. If you can dissolve the kryptonite, I will create an atom man. A what? what? An atom man. A creature in whose veins will flow a solution of pure kryptonite, who will, by use of a converter, be able to shoot kryptonite atoms from his fingertips in an unbroken chain that will create such destruction as the world has never dreamed of. You're mad! I was never so sane in my life, General Bromburg. If Professor Milch can dissolve the kryptonite, we will be able to control Superman and then force the rest of the world to its knees. But Teufel! You speak of an atom man. I presume you mean an artificial man, a robot. I mean a human being. A what? what? Yeah. A human being. One of us here, in this cave, will be the world's first atom man. Startled, Professor Milk and his Nazi cohorts stare open-mouthed at der Teufel. A human atom man. Can Teufel be serious? We'll return in a moment for the climax of today's episode. In a hidden cave in the Black Forest of Germany, where Professor Milk, the famous chemist, and several other prominent Nazis are hiding, Der Teufel has just startled them by stating that one of them would become the world's first atom man. Your bad, Teufel, mad. Out of such madness, General, will come victory. But how can this be, Teufel, with the kryptonite in his veins, a man he could not live? In my solution, he would live, Milk. But if the atoms were split, he'd blow up, you fool. Whom do you call a fool, General? I did not lose the war. You did. Well, Milch, speak. But we have everything to gain and nothing to lose. How long before you can dissolve this kryptonite? But I, I do not know. I have a small laboratory set up in another room as a cave, but it is not very complete. You performed great things during the war when you did not have everything you needed. Will you try now for your own life and the life of the fatherland? I tell you, he is mad, Milch. Nine, General, the Teufel is not mad. He is a genius. And if he says he can create an atom man's, then I believe him. Somehow, whatever the cost, I will dissolve the kryptonite. Well spoken, Milch. A toast to our success, gentlemen. Is there wine? Fine. Oh, yeah. yeah. Ah, good. Ah. Yeah. Heil Hitler! Heil Hitler! Heil Hitler! Heil Hitler! Heil Hitler! Heil Hitler! His moonlike face beaming, the Teufel leads the toast to the success of the dread Atom Man. Will this small, desperate band of fanatical Nazis succeed in their grotesque plot? Or will Superman, menaced as he never was before, Stop Teufel before it is too late. Don't miss tomorrow's exciting episode, fellows and girls. Tune in, same time, same station, for the adventures of Superman. Kellogg's Pep, the super delicious cereal, presents... The Adventures of Superman. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look! 
Up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. And now, the adventures of Superman. Escaping to Germany with a piece of the kryptonite fragment which robs Superman of his strength, Der Teufel, a brilliant Nazi scientist, made his way to a secret cave in the Black Forest where several leading Nazis were hiding. Teufel told Professor Milk, a chemist, that if the kryptonite could be dissolved, the resultant solution injected into the veins of one of their followers would create an atom man, a human monster, generating sufficient atomic energy to first control Superman and eventually bring the terrified world to its knees. Forty-eight hours have now passed, and neither Superman nor the Allied police have been able to locate Der Teufel. Once more in his guise of Clark Kent, the Man of Steel nervously paces the floor in the office of Colonel Greeley, Chief of American Intelligence in Berlin. Listen. For heaven's sake, sit down, Kent. You're getting on my nerves. Oh, I'm sorry, Colonel. I guess my own nerves are getting a bit ragged. It's just that Teufel has that kryptonite, and he's a, he's a brilliant scientist, and... Well, he's performed some experiments, something to do with an atom man, which he says will rule the world. Can't you believe that? Well... Say your nerves are in bad shape. It's just that I know Teufel, you don't. And I know the power of that kryptonite. I tell you, Teufel must be found, and found quickly. He, he must. But I need help. Even I can't examine every nook and cranny of Germany and all of the hundred million people in it. Fearful as he has never been before, Clark Kent, who is Superman, waits for some word of der Teufel. Meanwhile, at a little village near the Black Forest, a young military police sergeant named Bill Nelson has just alighted from a train after a 48-hour leave. In a jeep with Corporal Harry Marks, he is returning over the dark road to his base. Say, what's that new gadget in the dash, Harry? Looks like a radio. It is. We're in style now, Bill. Regular big-time cops. They put a two-way set in here day before yesterday, the day you went on leave. Say, pretty snazzy. <laughs> Turn it on, see if you can get Bing Crosby. Are you kidding? Let's see what headquarters has to say. Number three, South Central Occupation Zone. All military commanders and occupation police stand by for important announcements. Oh, what's this? It is believed that a dangerous German scientist named Der Teufel is now disguised in ragged clothing. Oh, that again. Carrying papers identifying him as... Friedrich Melker what? of Nuremberg. This man must be apprehended. Friedrich Melker? He is about 5 feet 7, weight 190 pounds, wears thick eyeglasses. He is believed to have in his possession a small piece of green glowing radioactive metal. Take no chances with this man. He is dangerous. That is all. We've been getting that announcement every couple of hours since you left. They must want that Teufel guy bad. I wonder what that piece of metal is he's carrying around. Friedrich Melker. You know, I've heard that name before. You have? Where? I can't remember. Gosh, I know I heard it someplace. Say, seems to me there's somebody in the movies or on the radio named Melker. Oh, I got it. An opera singer. Melky Orr. <laughs> that's why it sounds familiar. Oh, yeah. Maybe that's it. Sure. I'll spruce up, Bill. There are the lights of the inn. We'll be at the base soon. You want to look sharp when you meet up with the CO again. We got a lecture this morning about getting sloppy on occupation duty. Oh, I shaved on the trip. Harry, stop at the inn. What for? What's at the inn? I just remembered. That's where I saw Fred Frederick Melker. What? Now, wait a minute. I saw him, I tell you, two nights ago, just before I went on leave. Go on, pull up in front. You saw him where? In the dining room. He was with Gottfried, the innkeeper. Gottfried said he was his cousin. Gottfried did? Listen, are you sure? Sure as I'm sitting here. I was making my last check before going back to the base. And this short, powerful German was with Gottfried. He was wearing ragged clothes and a patch over one eye. I asked him who he was. He said he was Frederick Melker from Nuremberg. I asked him for his papers. Did he have them? They were in order, all right. So I left. But holy smokes, Harry, that guy was Teufel. Then what are we waiting for? Come on. Oh, it hasn't closed up yet. Oh, you better check your gun. Yeah. It's okay. Let's go. I didn't see anybody around when I was here yesterday or today. Well, it could be hiding in one of the rooms in the summer. If he isn't, Gottfried will know where he is. I never did like that rosy-cheeked crowd. Always fawning. Well, here we are. You're in charge, Sergeant. Proceed. The place looks empty. Here comes mine host. Ah, guten Abend, meine Herren. To what do I owe We came to see your, um, cousin. My, uh, uh, cousin? Yes, yes, you remember. He was here two nights ago. His name's Frederick Melker. 
Nobody in the dining room, Bill. Oh, oh, my cousin Frederick. Yeah, yeah, of course. I'd forgotten he was here. He stayed so short a time. You mean he's not here now? Oh, nine, nine. He left soon after you did, Sergeant. But, um, why do you wish to see Frederick? Are you kidding? You know, doggone well that nothing. Just a minute, Harry. Where did he go, Gottfried? He said he was returning to Nuremberg. That is his home. I see. Mind if we look around a bit? No, well, look around, of course not. But, uh, we'll take right. a look at the kitchen first. Come on. No, no, you lead the way, Godfrey. Uh, yeah, yeah, of course, of course, but I do not understand. I tell you, Frederick does not... What? He dove behind the bar. Dirty bum, come back here, Godfrey, or I'll drag you out of there. Oh. Harry! Harry! Godfrey! My leg. Look out, Bill. Yeah, I see him. <laughs> he ducked too quick. Harry, all right? Just my leg. Oh, never mind me, Bill. Watch when he shows himself again. You better come out from behind that bar, Godfrey. I will come out when you are both dead. Listen, you fool, you can't get away. You better come out while you're still alive. Oh, yeah? I show you. He shot the light out. Watch it, Bill. Stay down, honey. We, we can't see the bar. He can't see us either. Yes, he can. There's a little moonlight coming in from the window behind us. Oh, you seek that toy for that? <laughs> Yes, and we'll get them, and you too, Godfrey. Nine, it is I. I who will get you, you American swine. <laughs> Sit tight, Harry. I'm going after him. Oh, Bill, you can't see him. Don't worry. Just hug the floor, fella. What, Bill? Quiet. Godfrey, I got you. No, peak American. Bill, oh, Bill. I'm shot. Oh. Bill, uh, Bill. I'm okay, Harry. I think he's done for, though. How about you? You sound hurt. Uh, he nicked me in the side. You stay here. Where are you going? I'm going to the car. Radio. Gotta call the base. Bill! Bill! It's okay. I, I, I can make it. I hope. I gotta get to the car. Gotta call the base. Get hurt. Tell him. Hurry, hurt. I, I don't know if I can make it. Try my fella. Sitting his teeth and with one hand pressed to his wounded side to ease the pain, Sergeant Bill Nelson crawls, falls, and crawls again, slowly and tortuously toward the jeep. Will he make it? De Teufel is at this moment in the secret cave in the Black Forest, less than a mile away. Superman, if he were here, could see him. We'll return in a moment for the climax of today's episode. As Sergeant Bill Nelson, badly wounded, is trying to reach his car to inform headquarters that De Teufel had been in the inn near the Black Forest, Teufel himself, with a Nazi chemist, Professor Ernst Milk, stands at a rough table in the secret cave a mile from the inn. In a test tube, suspended above an improvised oil burner, a small piece of green glowing metal in a purplish liquid suddenly crumbles. There is a white-hot flash. And then the liquid in the tube turns green and boils violently, emitting a scorching green steam. Ah, Himmer, you've done it, Milk. Ah, Teufel. The kryptonite is at last dissolved. Wonderbar. My converter is already prepared. It remains only to select the one among us who shall become the savior of the fatherland. I have been considering that for a word. He should be young, or at a man, and strong. Yeah. And imbued with a hatred for our enemies. And I have decided that my son is the perfect choice. Your son? Ah, I have observed him. He is young and strong, and uh, he did well in the war, did he not? He received the Iron Cross from the hands of the Fuhrer himself. I have spoken to him of this experiment. He begs for the honor. Good. Prepare him, then. In a few minutes, when the kryptonite solution has cooled, we will inject it into his veins. <laughs> and in one hour, the first atom man will walk the earth to bend first Superman to his will, and then the rest of the world. One hour. In one hour, the Teufel states, an atomic monster will leave the dark cave in the Black Forest, first to subdue Superman, and then all civilization. Is there a chance yet for Superman to stop him? Only one hour remains. Sixty minutes. What will happen? We'll find out tomorrow, so don't fail to be with us then, fellows and girls. Tune in, same time, same station, and thrill to the adventures of Superman.